freedom this morning hallelujah and the first uh, scriptures that we are going to uh, uh, look at is uh, Galatians chapter 5 we're going to stay in the book of Galatians this morning mainly uh, this is a wonderful uh, letters that's the letters of freedom for freedom Christ has set us free stand firm then or therefore and do not be subject again to the yoke of bondage or slavery. Galatians 5.13 For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Do you remember of what Christ has set you free? We have been set free, and it is to continue to walk in freedom. I remember what I have been set free, and I'm sure you do set free. Uh, you have been set free, and you r probably remember the things. Uh, I don't know if you had a similar experience as mine, but uh, usually it begins with the big the big problems, you're being set free sometimes of addictions or drugs or drinking, bad language or aggressiveness, things like this. And then as the Holy Spirit uh, work in, in our lives, then it begins to get into our, our characters or changing habits and the, the inner life begins to, to change too. So we are being set free of many ways of bondage, of sin and things like that. This text says, for freedom. It is for freedom that you have been set free. So I want to insist on that because it shows the purpose why we have been set free. We have been set free of slavery to keep on walking and serving with freedom. So today we're going to talk about freedom. What is true freedom? How to stay free as well? Because if you look at these texts, you have two warning on these ones. Uh, stand firm then and do not be subject again, which brings a warning and an admonition to us. We have been set free, but we have to stay free. And uh, there's, a, there's a choice, there, there is a possibility, there's potential for not remaining free. There's a warning over there. And in uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, there's also a do not use your freedom. So there's choice in our lives, whether we are going to really uh, enjoy the freedom, live in that freedom, do the things that this freedom, the benefits, enjoy the benefits and, and live out of this uh, freedom that Christ, or we are going to uh, neglect something or go back to something or, don't, or, or misuse our freedom and it is go going to cause some problem in our lives. So freedom, we need to talk about, about this this morning. If you want to understand freedom, one of the key concepts in the letter of Galatians in the New Testament as well, in Roman, you see that also, is to look at slavery. You look at slavery as an illustration and it will help us to understand what freedom means in biblical term. And in the book of Galatians, we find a lot of mentions. Do you know that there are more than 15 direct reference in this small letter, 15 direct reference to freedom, liberty, set it free, uh, uh, bondage, uh, being slave to these direct reference. And then there are many more uh, indirect uh, reference, like instead of this, like you, you are being now a son, so you are not a slave anymore. So you have a lot of uh, uh, other texts that refer to it indirectly, but 15 direct uh, mentions of freedom and or slavery in contrast. Also, I want to note the emphasis uh, on freedom, that Christ has set us free, and we are called by God to live in that freedom, to stay free, but there's a strong warning uh, over there. Paul's letter to Galatians was written in the, probably the first letter written by Paul in the mid first century. This original letter does not exist anymore in this entirety, but there are many, many, many copies uh, 
uh, manuscript of this letter, and some of them are more than 1,500 years old in many museums around the world. So we know that this is really Paul. Paul claimed that the teaching in this letter also came from God. He says, I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came to me by revelation of Jesus Christ. This epistle was the favorite epistle of Martin Luther. He said, the epistle of the Galatians is my own little epistles because that's how he discovered salvation by grace. It became very, very personal to him. And uh, it also became the cornerstone of the Protestant Reformation, that letter uh, as well. So the summary verse of the old epistles and a very strong beginning uh, introductions is found in Galatians chapter 1 verse 4. So he gave himself for our sins. So we are going to the next one. Yes, he gave himself for our sins in order to rescue us from this present evil age according to the will of our God and Father. Also included another version of Galatians 5, 1 that we uh, have looked, it, uh, looked at already. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in bondage or in slavery. So Jesus Christ is our freedom uh, giver. He's the one. He gave himself for our sins in order to rescue us. So that's a wonderful. And it says, stand firm. Stand firm here means remain in a stationary position, like unmovable. This is what you have received. This is what you have. Just stay put. Don't move. Don't go back, in other words. Uh, keep on standing. Stay free since Christ set you free. Don't get tied up again in bondage. And the original uh, Bible language is, calls it the yoke of bondage or the yoke of slavery. And you know what the yoke is. So that is describing the heaviness, the burdensome uh, effect, how messy, how harmful, how, how painful, how humiliating the, to be in slavery is and how we are uh, benefiting that Jesus Christ rescued us from the yoke of slavery that we were in. You have been called to live in freedom, so keep on standing firm in your freedom and stay free. So that means also don't put yourself in a position where you will be tempted or you will go back or you will allow other people or circumstances to, to bring you to compromise or to bring you back to accept something in your mind that will bring you back to some form of bondage. That is our responsibility. We have the Holy Spirit. We have the wisdom of scriptures. We have been born again. We have new, uh, a, a new life. So we are not going back there. But Paul wants us to know and to understand the cause and what we were subject to in our slavery. And the next slide you will see there are three things here that uh, Paul raised in the letters to Galatians. First is a slavery to the present evil age, and we will discuss that. S number two, slavery to the sinful nature ourselves, and three, slavery to religion. We need to understand what bondage and slavery and freedom is by understanding the cause. You know, in our modern generation, I think many times we, we deal with issues uh, on a more superficial level. We deal with addictions and things like that. Uh, in a certain way and we try and we have methods and we try this and that but when you look well you will understand this morning how deep the the source and the problem of slavery where it comes from it will help us to understand the how why it is so dangerous why it is so devastating and things like that so slavery to the present evil age so when we look at this scripture here Paul doesn't waste any time. He immediately reminds us that Jesus Christ is the one who gave himself. So there was a cost to pay. Christ gave 
himself. The act of rescuing his people was not free. It was not easy. It was not simple. This morning we just uh, remember Jesus, what he has done, the price that he paid. He gave his life. He shed his blood. He suffered. He was beaten. He was humiliated. He was God. He's, he is God, but we look in, the, in his human form. He humbled himself lower than man, lower than angel. He became, he took the place of a criminal. He paid a great cost to redeem us, to, for us to be rescued. And then it says in the scriptures that we were rescued. And this phrase implies that we needed rescue. If you are been rescued, it's because you need uh, to be rescued. And when you are, uh, when you need to be rescued, means you are unable. You are in a prison. You are in a dangerous position, and uh, you are either enslaved or you are kept captive and, and bondage and chains. You cannot set you free. You are in a prison, so you need somebody to come to your rescue to help you and that's what Jesus has done and people were in that state and if we are not rescued if we don't change from that state of, of slavery it will be a disaster and any form of bondage any form is always causing hurt harm pain and a disasters whatever it is that we we are let me, uh, and then it takes uh, what we have been uh, delivered from. We have been delivered from the present evil age. This generation, the mindset of this generation. Let me read what Martin Luther wrote about this because it's, it's deep and it makes a lot of sense. Martin Luther says, Christ delivered us from the tyranny and rulership of the devil. That is to see from this wicked world, this wicked world which is an obedient servant and a willing follower of the devil. That is powerful. He has delivered us from this wicked world that was a, f a very willing servant and follower of the devil. For there is in it nothing but ignorance, contempt, blasphemy, hatred for God and disobedience against all the words and the works of God. That is where we were. And many times we, we minimize that. We, we, we forgot where we're coming from really. We were coming from that we were with the devil. We were within his control. We were in that bondage and we could not have come out of that. It says, for in this wicked world, and this evil age, there is nothing but ignorance, contempt, blasphemy, hatred of God, disobedience against all the words and the works of God. Is that true? Is the world uh, reflecting that, uh, that true today? I think Martin Luther pinned it very, very clearly, and that is where we were. Number two. We, our slavery had to do with our sinful flesh. The slavery is described as the state of being shut up. Let's go to the next uh, slide, Galatians chapter 3, verse 22. But the scripture imprisoned everything and everyone under sin. I want you to observe some of the strong language that Paul, we will understand true, the true slavery and bondage and true freedom this morning. But the scriptures imprison everything and everyone under sin so that the promise could be given because of the faithfulness of Jesus Christ to those who believe. Uh, we, we'll, we can come back to verse 23 in a moment. Let's look at uh, verse 22 first. The word imprison here, depending on which Bible version you may be using, uh, have different translation. It's like concluded imprison. It means to shut in together, to be under, to be locked up as a jailer who shuts everything in sin as in a prison, enclosed, imprisoned, all things. And this expression used in this scripture here is used four times in the New Testament. And Luke chapter 5, it is used uh, 
and the fishing. They are fishing and all the fish are enclosed in the, the net. Um, in Galatians chapter 3 verse 22, it's a spiritual confinement under sin. Everything and everyone is imprisoned under the power of sin. That is, that is, that is strong. It is a strong picture. It's a prison of sin, a prison of sinfulness where you needed a rescue because you could not get out of there. And uh, if you continue in verse 23 here, you see that everything, same, same terminology used, has been imprisoned under the law, the power of the law, the religion. Religion doesn't set free. Religion also keeps you in a form of bondage because it doesn't make you right with God. It does not save you. And uh, under disobedience, if we go to the next slide, I think we have one more. Uh, Romans 11, verse 32. For God has imprisoned everyone in disobedience so he could have mercy on everyone. So these are the four mentions of that terminology that everything and everyone has been imprisoned or locked in, shut in, uh, in this dungeon under sin. It's cons consigned, locked up all people in the prison of our own disobedience. First thing in this is that everything and everyone are imprisoned by sinful nature. And number two, the slavery includes everything. It is global, it is uh, universal. Everyone is under it. Paul leaves no room for any excuses for all human beings. The scriptures have shut up everyone under this slavery to sinful nature. In that prison, sin is the master, and we are not the master. You know, if you go back to Genesis chapter 3, at the very beginning of the Bible, the problem of sin is introduced. When the creation, the, the, the creatures, decided to rebel and reject the authority of God. So when we decide to reject God from our life, His authority, and to we, we want to submit to another master. We don't want the God as the master anymore. So the devil, the crafty serpent, tricked Adam and Eve, and man and woman resolved that they would make their own master. They would make their own decision. They didn't need to follow God a anymore. They would be their own master. So what they were lusting after, they were lusting after freedom. I don't know about you, uh, how important it was in your life, but I repeat it again to me when I was young, when I was growing. It's like uh, freedom was uh, uh, a very, very important thing for me. Uh, I have the impression that uh, uh, living a normal life, uh, going to school, uh, having a normal job, or uh, things like that. So I wanted to break all the rules in my life, and that led me to many other forms of, of slavery later on. But they were lusting after freedom. They wanted their freedom from God, and they believed that they must have it no matter what the cost. So this new freedom that they found after they disobeyed God was not what they expected to be. And that's often the case. You want freedom, you have a concept of freedom, but when you get the freedom that you get uh, out of disobeying God, out of rebelling against God, you get another form of freedom. They wanted to be independent, instead they became the devil's subject and they became slave. And that is now the story of mankind. The story of a man and a woman, if you think about that, who have been created in the image of God for good things. They were going to be, uh, one, one term that I read this week is called vi uh, viceroy, or uh, like a governor of everything that God gave us on planet Earth. This man and this woman were to be the representative, the reflection of God. Everything that God was doing for them was for their good. Everything was for the best. Everything was superb. And they didn't want that. They wanted to have, to have a freedom. Imagine. And they lost 
you know, this rulership, they lost the joy, they lost the communion with God, they lost, they lost the freedom, the enjoyment of life, and they became slave of a, a tyrant uh, like this. They became humbled into worth as worthless slave. And the next scripture is he explains something also to understand the power of addiction, the power of slavery in our life uh, in regards to our human nature, to the best of our human nature, for what our human nature wants. I mean, these are texts that are familiar, but sometimes when you look at them and uh, pointing in a uh, certain context, it means a lot. What our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants. And I want you to look at the many words on that. What the Spirit wants is, is opposed to what our human nature wants. It's opposed. It's opposed. They are, these two are two enemies. They are opposed. They are enemies. They don't work together what the human flesh, the carnal nature wants is opposed. It's enemies to what God the Spirit wants. And this means, there's a result of that, there's a logical conclusion to that, this means that you cannot do what you want to do. You do not do. You cannot do what you want to do. That is what the slavery is, isn't it? Isn't it? You want to do it, but you cannot do it. You're a slave. And there's many things like that. And I would like to uh, expand our, our mind a little bit uh, today, because I've been thinking about uh, wh wh what is it, what is slavery? What are we slave of? What can we uh, consider to be slavery or bondage? Of course, we know sin and we know the big doctrines, but is there other things that we can be uh, slave of? Um, there are many types of slavery. Prison is a type of slavery, if you are in prison. Uh, addiction, drugs, alcohol, because you want to stop, but you cannot stop. Uh, you, you don't like to be like that, but you cannot get out of like that. So you go back to it over and over again. Then you have what, I, I'm including something different also, uh, habits. Okay, you, you have good habits and bad habits. Should we keep on doing what has become bad habits? Or if you have grown up with bad pattern in your life, uh, bad manners, uh, bad... Uh, I'm not talking about things that you cannot change, that is part of your character. But I'm talking about things that you can change, that you may, may choose to, to improve on, on, on your way of life. It has become a habit or a pattern of life, negative characteristic that uh, annoy people, that hurts people, that cause harm to other people, that brings confusions, that, uh, that removes peace in the relationship and things like that. So these are called slaveries also, but these are habits. But because they are called habits, we kind of look at it like it's not really a big deal. It's only a habit. It's, it's part of who I am. And so many times we excuse the, this, uh, this, this is how I am. This is how I am. Just accept me like I am. This is, this is me. I cannot, in other words, uh, whatever, even if I could change that, I'm not changing it because that's who I am. I have become like that. And as we grow older, maybe we grow deeper into accepting some of these negative characteristics that the Bible tells us they are negative characteristics and we could change or pray because we have the Holy Spirit to change that. So we have uh, habits and we have also emotional bondage that we, we have uh, in the list of, uh, of slavery. Emotional bondage, for example, uh, fear. Fear of death is mentioned in the Bible as uh, a bondage. It is mentioned uh, that Jesus Christ, he says in Hebrew, has set us free, set free those who all their lives had been slaves to the fear of death. 
uh, fear uh, of not being good enough, uh, fear of whatever is paralyzing us or uh, uh, making us, uh, preventing us from doing the things that God wants to do. Remember, in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve were created uh, to the image of God for the purpose of God. And because of the slavery, they have been prevented to become the viceroy and the governors and the, 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 the representative of God because of that slavery. And many times when we don't deal with these negative issues, emotional bondage, or habits in our lives, and things that are becoming patterns in our life, negative patterns as Christians, we don't deal with these things, then it will also cause the same thing. It will prevent us from functioning to the glory of God, to do the best, to be fruitful. To like the, uh, if you look at the Bible uh, and the Gospel, uh, the parable of the sowers, they use the expression, it will choke. It's, it's the same thing. It will choke. It will prevent. The, 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 bad, the bad things grow with the wheat and the tares, and then the tares uh, overgrow, and then it choke, and it prevents a, a good harvest. So we have things like this in our lives that are, you know, w what we call also weaknesses. And we have temptations and things like that. So we have many things. In our life that we may be thinking, oh, Christ has set us free because I was born again. Okay, for example, I was born again in 1978. So I'm okay. I'm rescued. I'm not a slave anymore. But is that really true? I, could, I, could, I be, could I be slaved of uh, uh, pornography? Can I be slave of uh, anger? Can I be slave of... Uh, 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 Gossiping and, uh, and hurting the reputation of other people even after church is finished. You finish church, go to the restaurant and start talking negative about uh, the pastor's sermon or whatever it is. <laughs> that is what, uh, is that something? And, and then because, because you are a mature member and all of this, you have a right to do this. Does, will, it, will it help? Let me read to you... Um, Galatians chapter 15 verse 13 is not there just 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 a moment because I'm thinking of that because that was actually my original message that I started but I think I will come back to it um, for you were called to be free brothers that's Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 to 15 brothers and sisters only don't use this freedom as an opportunity to the flesh for the flesh but serve one another through love for the entire law is fulfilled in one statement. Love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out. You will be consumed by one another. So you have an example here of a negative behavior that is going to have a negative uh, result in the family of God. Instead of having love and unity, someone will destroy it because they devour they are doing something actually there's a lot to say uh, i have a sermon on that that point but i'm not the one that i'm ta talking about this morning but i'm just saying what are the bondage that we have to deal with that are beyond just like uh, the things that we we think that we are free we are free but we still have areas of our life that w we are not free in a way and we need to deal with these issues amen, amen. hallelujah praise the lord we have also slavery to religion or religious thoughts and everything uh, go to the next slide we'll go fast over that galatians 2 4 because it's part of the letter to the galatians because of false brothers secretly brought in who slipped in to spy out of freedom that we have in Christ Jesus so that we might bring us into slavery. So it is possible. You have people who are uh, misleading us, uh, maybe not that we have at the moment in Lighthouse, but this is a danger, a real danger that the, the church in Galatians was doing. And these people, if 
the church and the believers were not watching over their precious freedom that Christ gained to them would be brought back into a form of slavery. Go to the next slide. It's one of the most beautiful and powerful statement of Galatians. It starts in chapter 3 and it completes in chapter 4. Before, okay, verse 25. I will read verse 23 first. Before the way of faith in Christ was available to us, we were placed under guard by the law. We were kept in protective custody, so to speak, until the way of faith was revealed. Verse 25 here that you have. But now the faith has come and we are no longer under a guardian. For in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. You are not like this anymore. Before you were that the Jewish, the Ju Judaizers there, they were under the law. They were under the law until faith came. But now they have grown up and they are not. They have changed their status. They are sons of God through faith. There is neither Jew nor Greek, no slave nor free, male or female. But we are all one in Christ Jesus. And that is a wonderful, wonderful, you are all one in Christ Jesus. That is what we are, united. That is the beauty of Lighthouse Church. We are no male, female, this country, that country, that race, or that one, or whatever background, Jewish or Gentiles. We are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, what happened? You become heirs. So you see the change. You start from a slave. A slave has no right. It has not anything. And now you are heirs like Abraham, sons of Abraham. And if we continue to the next slide, the same thing. Look at all the, the statement that we have. At the appropriate time, just reading ahead, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. Is that something like that? To redeem those who were under the law. So that we adopted, we may be adopted as sons with full rights. We're not slaves. We have been adopted full rights. And because you are sons, a change took place in your inner life. God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts who calls Abba Father. We're not slaves. We have this uh, intimacy, uh, this love, this uh, uh, for God. And God is the, we, we have this family connection with God. We call him Abba to enable us, to empower us to live the life, not as a slave, but as free man. Verse 7, one of the most powerful declaration ever. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if you are a son, then you are also an heir through God. That is who you are in Christ. No longer a slave. We are called to live like that and to live by freedom. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go to the next uh, slide. We see uh, more of that. Before Christ, we were children. We were like, it's, it's an illustration. We were like children, enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. Formerly, in the past, when you didn't know God, you were enslaved to beings that by nature are not gods at all. So you see, most of the teaching in the letters of Galatians is addressed to the Jews, to people with a Jewish background that were under the law. But texts like this include us, and it includes the Galatians who were formerly a pagan, uh, they came from a pagan culture and society. They were enslaved to beings that by nature are not gods at all, or evil spirit, uh, idols, and, and these kind of things. But now that you have come to know God, or rather be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and worthless elementary principles of the world? Do you want to be enslaved to them all over again? And then that's the text that was. So as we are declared, 
you are no longer a slave, you are sons and daughters, and you are also heirs. So that, uh, that says so much about this. But then look at the questions being is, do you want to be enslaved all over again? So the possibility is always there to lose ground, to go back, not to do what you should go, not to walk in the direction that you should, not, not to let the Holy Spirit and the scriptures keep on transforming and moving forward. You know, in Philippians, Paul says that we are uh, up on an upward walk toward the heavenly uh, goal that we have. We're going upward, but some of us are not going upward, I'm sorry, because of choices because of negligence, because of that we allow things to, to come back into our life. And we should not do that. We should not do that. So the most important things that we look into this letter is that you are no longer a slave. We have been rescued. But at the same time, the warning of Paul to the Christians, do you want to be enslaved to them? all over again. You were, in uh, chapter 5, verse 7, you were running well. Who endured you from obeying the truth? And there are many mentions through the Bible of the type of slavery like we have talked about this morning. Do we want to be enslaved? Do we want to uh, not to do the things that God wants us to, to live? What happened? There are so many things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, there's a long list of things. Sexual immorality, worship idols, adultery, the effeminate, or men who have physical relation with other men, depending on which Bible version you have. Stealing, selfish, oh, selfish. That's one thing also, selfish. Or greedy, or getting drunk. Or lying. Oh, lying. I don't think we have liars here, but maybe we do. <laughs> lying to others or cheating people. These are part of a list of the things that we were before. And when these things, wh what is a slavery? So, slavery is something uh, that dominates over us. We don't want that, but we are like this. It dominates us. It, we are not dominating this. We are not overcoming it. These negative characteristics are dominating and overcoming us. This is being a slave and all of these. And we have a list. But it says, in the past, in the past, some of you were like that. Hey, whew. <laughs> in the past. You were, but you have been washed clean, you have been made holy, and you were made right with God in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God, by the working of the Spirit, a change has taken place. So, but then the question remains, do you want to be enslaved to these things all over again? Because we need to watch over, because we have a tendency, we still have our human nature and we go. The list could be much, much longer than that. Much longer than that. What happens when someone is a slave to anything? Think about it just a moment. What happens when we are a slave to anything, to something? Can a slave freely exercise his will? Can a, a slave freely uh, exercise his life go on with his life as, as a mission for God? Can, can a slave do that? No. The mission of God, the goals of God, the initiative of God, the plans of God, the works that God has prepared in advance are not going to be done. The fruit that we are meant to, to bring are not going because we, we are refrained, confined, imprisoned into some sort of bondage. It could be a bad mood. As simple as that could be just a bad behavior, bad characteristics that we are not working on. We are not letting the Holy Spirit improve us and getting rid of whatever it is. And that's why we need times of self-searching. Uh, we call it soul-searching, that the Holy Spirit examine our heart, search my heart. Oh Lord, search my heart, oh Lord. Amen? Can you do that? 
Because if we don't, we are not going to fulfill. And not only that, but the church is going to be hurt. Think about that. We are a family. We are a family. Okay, let's say we are a small family. Father, mother, two or three children. If something goes wrong there, the whole family suffers. We are the same. We are a big family. We are 200 people in Lighthouse. So when bondage are being developed among the members of the church, we're going to suffer. It's going to be messy. People will hear things that they should not be hearing. Uh, people will be treating others like they shouldn't be. And it will hurt, people will leave, people will be uh, suffering, people will, you know, things, you, you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. So what happened when someone is slave to something? A prisoner cannot run where he wants. He is confined to the limit of his prison. So ask the Holy Spirit to define some sorts of slaveries and bondage and prisons that we human, even Christians, may have to struggle with. And you would be surprised. If you really go before God and ask the Holy Spirit, we will be surprised, I will be surprised, you will be surprised what the Holy Spirit can show you that you may not have thought about it for a long time and it's bothering you and it's hindering you and it's keeping you to uh, develop a bad attitude or something at some point you have maybe made a, a wrong choice a wrong turn at your life and you went somewhere and it led you into some form of bondage you are not free you are not free with certain people in the church you are not free uh, ab about your own emotions and things like that it could be in a family, husband and wife. Things happen and it's not working anymore because there's a wrong turn somewhere. It could be emotional. But the good things, and I'm closing with that in Galatians, slaved, slaves are rescued, slaves are redeemed. These are all scriptures that we have looked this morning. Slaves are adopted. And slaves are heirs of God. And Jesus is the freedom giver. So we have everything that we need. Amen? Amen. We don't have to be uh, a slave. And the message of Galatians is you are no longer slaves. But you are children of God. Amen? Amen. Let's stand this morning. Hallelujah. And celebrate the freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Father God, thank you.